the sun sets, the undead awaken. To slake their hunger, they feed upon the herd of unaware mortals. Right beneath our noses, the kindred clash against their rivals as they vie for control of the city of San Francisco. Are you strong enough to cheat final death and see another night? Vampire the Masquerade Rivals Expandable Card Game from Renegade Game Studios. Welcome everyone to Vampire Wednesday. I'm Matt Holland, hanging out with Matt Hyra. How's it going? It's going all right. You're 100% ready for Gen Con. You could step on a plane tomorrow, right? I'm, I'm leaving <laughs> on Monday. This is the first time I will ever <laughs> arrive on Monday. It's the first time I will ever arrive before Wednesday, actually. So holy smokes! I know I get to do. I get to help with setup now. Hey, what we will, uh, <laughs> what will make you uh, earn your pay there, Hira? Uh, we are yeah. all going to be in Gen Con next week. Uh, I think hopefully with a lot of you guys too. Um, but we're going to be talking tonight about. The, a little bit about Gen Con. We're going to show off the trophy. We're going to talk about some uh, you know, prizes and other OP stuff coming up. Uh, and we are also going to uh, talk about some, some minor rules updates, but also a really nice and I think more significant change with how the clarifications and stuff are presented. Um, yeah. So some pretty good news, I think, that the community has been asking for. Uh, and hello, Wonder Hamster. Not, not you, but the other one. Um, I like. I see what you did there with the uh, the greeting that does, works for both mm -hmm. of us, or actually doesn't work for either of us. Um, so, congratulations first off to Chris Knapp, the Prince of Seattle, as of last weekend, winning mm -hmm. our final U.S. Prince of the City event. So, cool. wrapping things up here in the states, but we've still got uh, what four more events here internationally, starting with Toronto, which is this weekend. So, if you're in Canada in the you know greater toronto area or if you're you know just across the river in the united states head up to um canada and win yourself a prince title and then madrid september 3rd this is going to be a the only one versus one prince by the community request there uh, and just if you're planning to go to that be aware they are not going to be using heart of europe just due to the fact that it's not reaching every place you know in the eu qu as quickly as we would like to uh, they just want to have that be a nice level playing field. And we, so we gave them the okay for that. Uh, and then you can still win a chance uh, to get to be Prince in Manchester, September 10th, or Brussels, Belgium, September 11th. So if you're near those, get out there and play. Uh, Matt, we have something pretty cool to show off that you designed uh, over the past year that is going to be a part of our Clan Clash kit. So um, hmm, Josh... Right. Josh Johnson, if you are watching, you, uh, Prince of Indianapolis, the first winner card here is is coming and available soon in the upcoming Clan Clash OP kit. So a new Lasombra Vampire, five, five mm -hmm. blood potency as befits a prince. Seems like a nice nod there from uh, <laughs> you and the design team. Yep. Uh, that's going to be available. It's one of the four promos contained in that kit. That kit's going to be available to any retailer uh, and like select clubs or communities, if you have a group that doesn't have a store that's running things, you can reach out and get uh, access to that kit. Uh, the winner will be Primogen of your store. And you're going to get this plus a new agenda and two new havens, which you can use for new kind of deck building possibilities. Um, do you want to tease anything about the agenda in there, Matt, and like what sort of play style it facilitates? Uh, in the in the Clan Clash, did you say? Yes. Yeah, it's the... Uh, the kiss the ring and what that does. Oh, are we are we showing those off at the end of this broadcast or no? I'm not going to show the whole thing off, but maybe you can okay. tell people a little bit about like what to sure. expect, like what's what's going to enable or make uh, yeah, possible. Yeah, kiss kiss the ring is a um, it is a an aggressive agenda, but it is fueled by influence. So if you are a uh, ah. if you yeah so. When you when you strike uh, against your uh, against your foes, if you can uh, throw some influence in uh, towards your uh, towards your agenda card activation, you can earn yourself some pretty decent agenda just for making that attack. And so, then, of course, if the attack succeeds, you also will earn whatever normal agenda you might. Yeah, earn. if if you're calling them rivals, sure. Yeah, you can also earn it just for knocking them out. So it's a way for the high influence deck to. Uh, get into some scrapes where they haven't necessarily done that very much 
previously. Awesome. Well, I think that those you know four new promos are going to make uh, showing up to your Clan Clash events really appealing. Those are our participation prize, so you're just going to get one for go for showing up. Uh, the winner will get a play mat, and there'll be some acrylic token. Uh, sorry, top four will get a play mat, and there'll be some acrylic tokens for the for the champion too, in addition to that primogen title. Mm -hmm. uh, Matt, you made a small update to the tournament rules. Again, nothing that affects yeah. any cards or anything. Uh, you want to share yeah. a little bit about what's there? It's already online. You can go see it right now. Yeah, yeah. It's just a little. You know, we we hear from people at tournaments and whatnot, and. Um, we like to future proof the rules as much as we can as well. So the uh, the tournament rules about uh, about slowing about stopping table talk uh, spoke about spoke about schemes as something where table talk is allowed even you know because it's an interactive event you can't you need to be able to uh, talk to other players even when someone has said hey I need some quiet so I can take my turn here right then you play a scheme. You've, you've opened yourself up for some table talk because that is a an interactive thing. So we thought, well, you know what? Instead of making it so specifically scheme, we wanted to future-proof it to cover things like uh, someone claiming Prince of the City. That's an interactive thing that happens. And we, we, sure. we expect that there's other things that we really haven't even thought of that are slightly more interactive than we than we had than we had or that you'll do in the future and this will prevent yeah. us needing to make so, a yeah. new so rule the every only time. change the only change is just talking <clears throat> about um when can someone talk even when table talk is is been called for and now we say that um if the if, if someone plays a card that creates an interaction between two plus players table talk is going to be allowed for a reasonable amount of time the person still does have the right to take their turn without constant interruption. But if they are interacting with another player, that is going to be a, uh, there, there is a chance for table talk. Obviously, if someone is attacking a citizen or an antagonist, that's a, that's a one person thing. So you can't, uh, you can't yell at them for doing that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so again, nothing that hugely changes anything yeah. for anyone, but just, just a nice little thing. housekeeping thing. Uh, and then the rules update update is a little bit yeah. more significant, uh, not even as True. much in terms of content, but in format. So uh, with the help of a very helpful community member uh, and playtester, mm -hmm. we've got a, the rules clarification document has been totally reworked, uh, organized. It will have uh, a table of contents and bookmarks and is now organized by basically um, like type of entry, yeah. So like well, all the erratas well, together, all the card clarifications yeah, are together, all like, the new rules are together. Right. Anything that is a new change will be highlighted at the beginning, but with a link, and the actual rule will be in the section of the rules where that should go. So whether it's just an update to change the rules, a clarification, expanding on the rules, uh, errata, or um, or a card wording update, which is kind of like changing the text only to maintain the intent of the card, not a real change, you know, kind of like PR firm, right? It was just written poorly. We didn't change it. We just made it, yep. you know, work better with the rules. So each different type of rules update has a different section. The newest stuff will go at the top with a link. You can click the link. It'll take you down to the actual rule or update or FAQ, whatever it is, and you'll be able to easily find it. Uh, and so once, um, you know, when new updates show up, it will knock the old updates out of the newest thing at the top. So when you first come into it, you'll see the newest stuff. <clears throat> you can click on those to figure them out. Once those things aren't new anymore, they will not be in the newest section, but they'll still be in the lower section, right? So, and then new things will come in to the newest area at the very top. So yep. easy reference at the top, but now it'll be much easier to find what you're looking for quickly and you can reference it to the person arguing with you at the table over some uh, over some ruling. And uh, we wanted to get this up before Gen Con. Uh, and we will, we don't currently have the, the, the FAQ from the previous uh, releases in here yet. The ones uh, that's including in the back of the rule yeah. book you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, the back of the rule, yeah. Each of the, each of the rule books has had a little FAQ kind of further explaining cards because you can't, can't fit everything onto the actual game text box. 
Uh, those things, they, they will need a little bit of massaging before they get in there because some of the, some of the rules they're referencing are, are kind of old or things like that. So we, we do need to go through it word by word to really make sure it's good. And, and you know, there's, there's been a little bit of that. So we want to get this up there as quick as possible. Mostly yep. because there is a change uh, to one particular thing. So the heart of Europe uh, introduced, uh, had two rules updates. One was the uh, knowledge is power and city park. Previously, we were trying to let players finagle those a little bit. And we realized that was a mistake. And we took back the, uh, the, uh, the FAQ entries for those. So they work like any other triggered effect. You know, when you exhaust your character, that's when uh, you're going to check for uh, knowledge is power. Same goes for City Park. You don't wait until the entire activity is over. All right. Uh, the other thing that was in Hardy Europe was uh, the step 2A of the attack sequence. Well, I, I had hoped that that would not cause too many issues, but um, what actually happened is we had written that rule book and it was off to the printer before we had really done a, a really deep dive on Relentless, okay? So we, it was, it was um, that two way was supposed to be a stopgap measure until we could really hammer things down and it ended up kind of screwing us. And I was hoping that it wouldn't be an issue, but just with the number of questions we got about it, it's, it was an issue. So what we're actually uh, going to be posting tonight after this broadcast is an updated attack sequence, removing the 2A. Now, I did not, my hesitation was, I didn't want to remove a brand new rule that we just came out with in Heart of Europe, um, but it, it needs to be done and for the, for the sake of a, of, a, of a good tournament at Gen Con. So there is now an updated attack sequence and a spoiler alert, this is uh, taken partially, there, it's, it's edited down a little bit. Uh, there's not all the nitty gritty in there and it only talks about the beginning of the attack sequence really. Um, this is now some of the text from what will soon be a new core rule book, which will be much, much more procedural, uh, much more line by line bullet points, do this, do this, do this, and less, less uh, talking about everything and hiding rules in the middle of paragraphs and everything. If you're looking for a procedure for any particular act in the game- Almost like a rules it, reference. Yeah, right. you're gonna see it spelled out <clears throat> point by point on how to do this. Uh, so it'll, it will be easier to figure things out, less ambiguity in the rules we're hoping. It's been uh, looked over by all the play testers, edited several times and it's good and, and we're liking it. So. The change, the, the, the change that we needed to make is when can you uh, react to an attack? The 2A rule uh, allowed for any, uh, the active player could use any action uh, during, uh, you know, at the start of the attack sequence. But uh, that was leading to a lot of unintended consequences. So uh, 2A is gone. Forget about 2A, never existed. The way it works now is uh, kind of more how people actually play the game. The way that people typically play the game is they will uh, send a character out into the street, they will exhaust their character and then say, oh, I'm attacking you over there, all right? So we wanted to emulate that because that's the natural progression anyway. The, the rules sure. of Relentless had said something to the effect of, you know, you would, you would respond, uh, you know, pretty much immediately when, you know, when they're, when they're, um, when they're first uh, making their attack, but there were issues with Intel, taking things back, all that. So now the attack sequence, uh, making an attack works a little differently. Now you have an exhaust step, a target step. So you exhaust your ready character in the street, same as usual. You choose your target, but now you also will uh, generate your Intel. At, before you actually enter the attack sequence, all right? Mm. Once that intel step is over, then only relentless abilities may be used. 
Active player cannot play any old ability they want, only relentless abilities after the Intel step. Now, what this also means is, like we see at events, even Prince events, people will often let players take an attack back. And that is uh, something that we appreciate that we have friendly players, but we want to get that a little more into the rules because sometimes it is difficult to know what the attachments are on a particular character. You might be surprised that they have a shadow cloak on them or some other, or the one of the new citizens that has uh, plus one secrecy. And so a lot of times what has happened is people will go, whoa, wait a minute, you have plus two secrecy? I had no clue about that. Um, I wanna take that attack back. And that has, people have, uh, have let that happen and we appreciate that. But now what happens is the rule reads, if your intel cannot be raised high enough to match the secrecy of the target, or you choose not to pay it, the attack ends and the attacker readies. The action is not spent. You undo any attacker abilities or triggered effects that may have been triggered. And obviously to avoid all this, you can just ask a, ask a foe what the secrecy of their character is before making the attack, okay? So exhaust, target, intel, after that, relentless, then you're entering the attack sequence proper. That's when you're going to announce the attack type and so on and so on. Play your attack card, reactions, or you know, blocking reactions, all that. And then, uh, so playing, uh, using uh, abilities is going to be um, back into the standard uh, combat sequence there. We haven't numbered the entire thing because it's all been renumbered now because Intel is no longer part of the attack sequence, it's part of the pre-attack, it's part of the attack announcement. Sure. And it is the attack announcement <clears throat> is where we wanted Relentless to land. And we just missed by making it 2A. So really you could think of it as 3A now, <laughs> but not for any ability, just Relentless. So this is gonna be posted uh, tonight in the rules update. If we missed anything big, uh, let us know. Um, but we really wanted to get this out before Gen Con. It really doesn't change anything. It just solidifies that, yes, there are take backs when you are surprised by secrecy or other shenanigans. You can you can rewind your attack if... Uh, if no, no, no new information has been revealed or anything. Yeah, this is not... This is, this is a, this is a, the, the only real change is 2A does not apply anymore. You can't play... Uh, you can't uh, use, for instance, you can't use Hydra to draw a card before he, uh, you know, before he plays his attack card for the turn. That sort of thing. Sure. That's that was the classic example in the core rulebook. You can't use Hydra, so before you can't use Hydra's ability to pay one blood, draw a card before playing your attack card, because that happens uh, later on after uh, reactions, gotcha. block, after blocking and reactions. So. Yep. So, so the 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 idea is between the rewritten core rulebook and then this this more comprehensive and better organized clarification document. That's mm -hmm. everything you need in just those two spots. Not needing to go to the yeah. Shadows and Shrouds rulebook, right. you know, and the core rulebook and the clarification. We're just going to slim it down and then also organize mm -hmm. it much better uh, as yeah. a thing that people had requested and a thing that was already kind of on our list. Um, and it is now ready to be seen in its yeah. initial form. And one other thing, um, we are, the, the, the new core rulebook is actually, it's, um, it's not scheduled to be out for, for a while, but we will post a, we will post it as soon as it's been completely edited and, yeah. you know. It'll be available and, and, digitally before it's yeah, available. Yeah, we will, we will post it as soon as we can uh, just because it's going to explain everything a lot better. So, and a, a lot more concise, a lot more, uh, you know, take it very literally, <laughs> right, is, is basically a, a good way to say. The, the, the original rule book had a, you know, was trying to tell a story and, and, and uh, things like that. And, and kind of some of the rules were a little muddled because of it. So, yes. Cool. We well, hear, that's that's uh, huge, huge issues so far. No, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, no, there was a question I wanted to just roll back to. Wonder Hamster asking: Is the tournament at Gen Con including Heart of Europe? Yes, the tournament at Gen Con is including Heart of Europe. Uh, all people who are signed up have been 
should have received a message through the Gen Con system, just confirming that in case anybody was unsure. Mm -hmm. uh, and Gen the Con is including the Prog City deck. Yep, we were using the Prog City deck. I know our US pre orders events, though, for direct, yeah. um, mm -hmm. direct customers from Renegade. Those have largely all arrived all over the country, and I believe even your local game store should have theirs uh, this week. So you should be able to get that. If anyone is unable to get their pre-order before they show up at Gen Con, uh, just need to reach out to me. We will take care of you and make sure you can get any cards you need access to, including a city deck to play in the event. So don't stress about that. We'll take care of you. Obviously the shipping delays made this a lot closer thing than we had hoped. Um, Mm -hmm. which is the story of this Gen Con, let me tell you. But we will make sure <laughs> nobody's going to suffer, yeah. you know, for for uh, for that reason. Uh, people mm -hmm. were, will certainly suffer and be punished and be beaten up during the tournament, but not for that one reason. Uh, right. Speaking of other cool stuff going on at Gen Con, we've got a team event happening. There's still mm -hmm. some seats. Uh, there are seats open for all events currently. So if you are showing up or if you were on, on the fence if you wanted to play in any of these tournaments like absolutely sign up the prizes are going to be awesome they're going to be there, there's a room for you to come play uh, but we have now we have posted those team rules that we shared and talked about a while ago mm -hmm. if you go on the vampire excuse me vampire rivals.com website you will um excuse me just go to uh, organize play and mouse down in that menu there you can go right to the rules document and just yeah. prep for that um mm -hmm. and matt you had some sort of some hints or suggestions just based on yeah. some folks in Scotland ran with the rules a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And we just had some, some conclusions, some conclusions and sort of heads ups for people. Yeah. Well, we gave a little primer for what you uh, could expect at the, at the main event, the conclave. Uh, so we thought we'd just have a little team with team game uh, primer. What to and one V ones preview. And 1v1s, we'll talk about that after. So with the team rules, so it's uh, it's now two on two. Um, keep in mind that, yes, it is slightly more difficult to achieve a Coterie elimination or a Prestige Drain elimination, KO, on your uh, on the opponents, but attacking is, is still good. And one thing to uh, watch out for is ganging up, right? When it's, when it can be, when two players can focus on one player, that one player uh, might be might have most of their coterie uh, sent into torpor and not be able to do too much during their turn. So defenses, despite the fact that um, coterie elimination will be more rare, defenses are probably still a good idea, as you can yeah. imagine. So have a plan for what happens uh, when you get ganged up on, right? So let's say that uh, player one and player three uh, decide they want to gang up on player four, right? So because one and three are together against two, yeah, one and three are to make together, sure everybody's four clear. together, right? So the odd players are going first. So player one attacks player four. Let's say this is like round two or three, right? Obviously not first round, but let's call it round three. So player one attacks player four. Okay, well, player two when it's when player one's turn is over, player two needs to realize that, wow, if if my partner loses one of their two vampires, they only have one left over to take a real positive action. They might have to draw a card or something or recruit again, you know, use a use something that doesn't take a, a, a vampire to use. So player two might want to attack player three's main attacker just so they yeah. can't maybe maybe put a fear on them, something, maybe a minus one BP, something like that to slow them down and make sure that they're not gonna come and then smack player four again, leaving them with just one character, okay? Yes. So some defenses are, are typically good. Um, you know, being in your uh, haven when you're being attacked is not a bad idea because your opponents are gonna have to spend cards for intel. If, you're, if you want, you can go out to the streets so that you can block for each other, okay? Keep in mind that attacking parties can be large and pretty dangerous because that uh, there's a lot more uh, there's a lot more ways for attackers to benefit each other with uh, attack abilities let, let let's say hold out dagger and whatnot right mm -hmm. so be aware of that uh, that's uh, that's one of the reasons why the coterie alienation rules are as they are because it it you can get a large attacking party together and a lot of attacking bonuses can be pretty dangerous. Mm -hmm. So um, how can you how can you uh, how can you avoid getting your coterie whittled down to just one character? 
feel free to uh, recruit more characters. You've got 22 prestige. You might be a person who normally brings out like a six of five and a four, right? Well, you can recruit yourself down to two prestige as long as your teammate isn't yes. doing the same thing, right? So go ahead and bring out a, a six of four and two fives. They're probably not gonna get taken down. You might only have two prestige, but if you drop to zero, you're gonna get one from your partner, right? So uh, you have a you have an out there. So don't be afraid to spend more prestige on recruiting to make sure that you have at least two characters so you can take two positive, strong actions during your turn, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, and then you had some thoughts yeah. on the head-to-head -head event too. So we have a 1v1 event. The, the 1v1 yeah. event, uh, I will say the, the winner is gonna get a pretty sweet one-off play mat uh, it features the art oh. from Title Fight, uh, and that's going to be really only uh -huh. for for this event. So a good reason nice. to show up there. It looks quite nice. Um, yeah. But you had some thoughts about maybe things to try there, or like yeah. you know, another thing that may not be seen as much. Yeah. Well, the head to head, um, when you don't have to worry about anyone else at the table mucking up your plans, this is a this is where you're you're going to see things like what what is classically known as the Wild West of card games. People are going to bring their their weird decks to this because it'll be a, a chance to um, to try some things without having a lot of people there to, to, to break down their their particular engine. So, for instance, uh, expect to see some disheveled shelves. Uh, the card, uh, the agenda has gotten a lot of attention. People are excited about this new victory condition, and this is a probably a good time to try it out because when you're allowing all the players to draw a lot of cards, well, that's just you and your hapless opponent. So uh, you, no one is going to profit to, no one else is gonna profit from that too much and then come after you and make you pay for your insolence, all right? Uh, other things is you might not see Dragon's Roost as much because it's just not as necessary. Uh, you're not trying to prevent uh, other people from, uh, uh, you're not, you're, you're not, yeah, you're not trying to prevent a lot of people from doing things to you or to other players. You're not going to have to save anybody from losing. You're not, you probably are fine if you're, a, if you're, if you're a rival, if the person across from you takes a, a citizen or two, maybe it just, it just might not matter as much. Um, so things like that. And uh, cards that can knock down someone's agenda become uh, very good in head to head because it is often an agenda race. And when you're only racing one other person, if you can hit them for an agenda or two via a rain on your parade or a ritual or some of the La Sombra cards, uh, that's, uh, that seems like a pretty good plan. Yeah. Yep, it's going to be a little bit different, you know, play style than I think a lot of people have been practicing for, uh, and mm -hmm. hopefully be a nice little breath of uh, of change after the long conclave. And this year, it does not interfere with the top cut, so you know nobody will have to miss out because they're in the top cut. Which yep. I know everybody wants to be in that top cut, but only sixteen of you are actually going to make it. Uh, uh, speaking of Gen Con and some cool prizes, speaking of the top cut, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Speaking of the top cut, hold on, let me get my oh, yeah. My black background here. And and yeah, your... that, that looks like it could cut someone actually. Yes, Good it is goodness. a suitably vampiric and fang like trophy. Good a luck getting North that on American the plane champion. Home. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you I hope you have some carry on luggage. <laughs> in, in beautiful, beautiful red accented crystal as yeah. befits a beautiful. bunch of bloodthirsty vampires. Uh, we'll, so that's we'll gonna post, go home. We'll post some beauty some beauty shots of that tonight right yeah yep yeah i have a picture i will share in discord here just after um but that's going to go home with the champion the the uh justicar as it is for the mm -hmm. continental conclave uh katie just dropped the link to the discord into the chat so if you are somehow you know here mm -hmm. joining us on the stream but don't know about discord we have a great um community there and a lot of discussion yeah. a lot of advice a lot of questions being asked and answered yeah. So make sure that deck you... building. a lot of deck building yes. advice is, is given there and uh, everyone is very interested in helping and uh, loves chiming in. So if you're unsure what to play in the conclave or the team game or even head to head, just drop in and uh, yep. 
let them know what kind of deck you like and and what uh, what some good cards you know what what are some cards you might be missing from it. Yes, indeed, uh, it's it's really a really excellent resource. Um, so don't be afraid to introduce yourself. The community has been very welcoming and helpful mm -hmm. to a lot of people who I've seen just show up. Uh, so yeah, that's that's awesome. We're going to have the beautiful playmat featuring some of that new art from the special events that we'll be running with our city deck at the Conclave. Uh, we've got the beautiful acrylic tokens that we've shown off in, in Discord uh, and a bunch of other goodies for everyone who's playing. So including all those new plastic cards from Shadows and Shrouds in Heart of Europe. I think those are the two, the two products that we did not have the agendas and havens done in plastic. Those will mm -hmm. be at Gen Con too. So okay. you can get whatever you're running and, and really uh, upgrade your, your deck and your little tableau there. Uh, but that's, cool. that's, that's pretty much it for us. We are excited for Gen mm -hmm. Con. We've got a great judge team. We've got a great slate of events. Uh, I'm really excited to see all the players again and hang out with Matt and everybody. Matt, I assume you are going to be uh, looking forward to seeing it again. Oh seeing yeah, everybody. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot more. There's a lot more clans and cards out there, so it's. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to, to seeing what people bring. For those of you who are not able to make it, I believe the what we do in Elysium, folks, are going to be recording some games, and uh, our plan, Renegade's plan, is to stream the final on Saturday. So Katie will be there on site. And we'll have some sort of final for the co coverage for the final, so you can, you know, kind of live vicariously through those of us who are there. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I hope people are able to enjoy that. Uh, we obviously will not have a stream next Wednesday because we will be in Indianapolis, in Indianapolis, and scrambling to get things ready before the show opens Thursday. We'll be shelving product. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, and then uh, the plan for August 10th will be a Gen Con retrospective and like coverage. Just go over, you know, what we saw there, congratulate all our winners, that sort of thing. Uh, and then August 17th is currently planned to begin our previews for the Dragon and the Rogue. I know a certain uh, canid member of our community is really eagerly awaiting <laughs> the Ravnos cards. So right. sometime uh, on or after August 17th, your curiosity will finally be sated. So that's a little little preview yeah. for uh, for everybody. What's coming up these next few weeks? Mm -hmm. uh, hope I'm really looking forward to seeing everybody travel safely, and we will see you guys next week in Indianapolis for the Continental mm -hmm. Conclave and Gen Con. Sounds good. So thanks for tuning in, Matt. You have a great night, and I will see you next week. Bye bye.